Here are some of the craziest highlights and the best plays that we saw yesterday in Lobby Legends. This is a dong he wins. He's the first one! He won! Oh my gosh! In case you don't know what Lobby Legends is, it's the biggest official tournament that we ever got right now for Hearthstone Battlegrounds. This event alone had a $50,000 prize pool and these were the people competing in the finals. So you're about to see some of the best competitors that fought their way into these finals go head to head with the highest stakes ever. I got the opportunity to co-stream this and give my own casting while this event was happening. Here's how the point system worked. It was very basic and simple, but the finals used a check system. This was basically something we've never seen before in Hearthstone and it was a lot of fun and super intense to watch. You need to reach 20 points and as soon as you got 20 points you're in check meaning you just need to get a first place to close out the game. So get to 20 points first, check and then you just need to get a first place and you win. That's enough talking, now going into the first game. Now I have to say almost every game played in this tournament was a masterpiece, was actually so insane to watch, with a lot of cool strategies and plays that I wouldn't even have thought of. Right out of the bat we have some low power level heroes in here, especially with beasts and mechs missing. We have Vol'jin as well. F what the fuck, Sindragosa? Gilwing? One thing you will notice is that there's a lot of tempo heroes in the lobbies as well, like Dancing Daryl and Mukla. On turn 5, the madness already begins and the Vol'jin already has a triple here. People are tripling into 2 drops again! What? Curve 7 gold stays in 1, triples into 2 drops. Bobo what? But it all makes sense to turn after when he hits that Chroma Wing on Vol'jin and is able to capitalize on it really well. At least in an insane spot. Next turn they can level triple into 6, they hit Caligals, they have a... Already a battle cry dragon in hand. I think Elise is gonna win this lobby as well. And of course, Elise took the greedy line and tripled into the Caligals. They have a golden mirror zone. Seems very late compared to what's with a brand. So yeah, when Elise gets to tier six, she is kind of in a good spot. The double Caligals with a brand. He is looking like the front runner in the lobby, and there's an Adina now as well. Uh, I don't think that Kurt Elise can keep is up not. Holy like shit! Really Golan's only one being out so far on Omu. It's still a top seven, and Pompata respecting his Mukla opponents, playing a ghoul already to counter Nadina with dragons, actually giving him the win with his demon board against those big dragons, and now being put in a top five. Oh yeah, and uh, this is a Vol'jin by the way that stayed on one triple into two drop just to find Chroma Wing. I think it uh, kind of worked out for him in the end. Oh. So stupid, man! Yeah. What the fuck am I it's watching? In the end, it comes down to the Elise versus. The Vol'jin, I don't think that's a surprise. Elise has double Nadina, even pressed her to counter all of the shields. Uh, the Vol'jin tried to play the round Nadina with the Demon Taunt, but even then, the Nadina still hit, so everything going wrong for the Vol'jin. The Wildfire not getting an over trigger. Uh, I thought Elise was always gonna have this in the bag, but then. Oh, he actually has a chance! Yeah. I didn't. I was riding him. What off. the fuck? Was, you know, can't you get first. first places. Now on to game two. We see again a bunch of interesting hero picks like Toki, Shanvala, Arana. Meanwhile, Rafam got the god opener. Oh Dude. my gosh, Kirk gets offered a I think he won. Then Toki doing some really cool stuff I haven't really seen before. You hear part into a two drop, okay? I've never seen this curve before. Like a Toki that stays down and goes for a two. The early game just keeps on getting crazier. Gallywix also has a double token triple lined up. The issue with Gallywix is though he has 33 hp and no tempo we see everyone already with the swamp striker opener with insane stats so he's gonna take a lot of damage meanwhile the arana only just got a hero power dome on turn six and tripled into a four he has an event setup with dazzling as well but arana going with dazzling is something i've never seen before just the lines he takes are so interesting like he doesn't just cheese on tier two he goes for the dazzling setup. He might just win the lobby with this. A runner with Nomi stuff would be nuts. I like everyone's lines. Toki's thing on one is super interesting. Never seen that before. People tripling into twos and trees. I rarely see. And these people make it work and seem like it's just always the right play. And the mid game just keeps getting more and more interesting. And oh! We also have called the Rafam actually found Nomi. Wait, that's interesting. We have uh, like two people with dazzling. The Gallywix and um, a runner. Uh, uh, damage cap is gonna save everyone still except for Gallywix. And Rafam found the Nomi. And let's not forget there's also Shavala probably pushing for elementals. Oh my god. And Arana is 5 HP though. So Arana needs to not die here and they win. Uh, they had the Dazzling. They actually tripled into Nomi which is impressive. That is like insane. Gallowix still with a massive elemental board. Pushed to tier 5 to triple into 6. And here's what Shambhala is doing. Pretty reboard but they have a golden stuff and a brand. So yeah they have a very bad elemental board wow. But they made it to tier 6. And while everyone is high rolling, we got Yogg with the tempo shaker board on tier 4. Oh! He's a shaker comp, okay. <laughs> He's dead. 
He's still alive though by this point, so he did his job. Apparently he found nothing, he turtled up. Eventually this is the top 4 and both Toki and Shanvala are still a part of it. The Shaker comp was somehow able to beat the Toki and then losing to the Shanvala. So in the end it's gonna be the big elementals against a bunch of poison of shields and even though I felt like the Amalgadon board was favored here, after the wildfire got multiple great snipes, the win goes to the Rafam. Here are the current standings and as you can tell people are really close together and putting up a fight. Game 3 are we seeing a bunch more heroes with high roll potential. Cirilla gets all the is in the world and hits it double triple early on. I'm telling you, actually cheating. He froze this pair and got the other triple in shop. Gallowix to turn off on turn 5, already tripling into a 5 drop. Takes a Nomi. Which is rather greedy and he keeps on facing strong opponents, then queues into this mutinous. Oh, Holy shit! But now he's facing. Dude, this is so unfair. The Gallowix is facing this. The Gallowix doesn't have poison, right? No poison, you can't beat us. So he's always dead. And so he is the first one to go out. But to be fair, this mutinous was just on another level. It's self to get Oh my god. Going, that is something that means that Ken That's is disgusting. feeling confident in his board. He's still on 30 HP. He got to hear power of selfless onto... Oh, that is actually disgusting. Because next turn he just hear powers this thing again and lands again onto the body. Man, and this is what the other players in the lobby are up to. It's a little bit scuffed. Love this it. Mukla, what? He has a ton of Malidon with an Adina. And then Reborn Goldrin. Wait, what the fuck am I watching? What is this? Reborn Goldrin plus one beast. I mean, two of this lives, but Doing he what wins. He kills the Daryl. And here's how that Xyrella is doing with the many tokens in the early game. I told you guys, he got two token pairs super early on, or two token triples super early on. So he just wins. Kaleg, Golem Magadon, two more Magadons, Brand, tier 6, uh, he wins. He even has a presser in hand. In the end, it is gonna come down to the Mutants with an actual insane board versus the Xyrella, but I mean, Xyrella just has too many tools here. Here are the current standings. There's two people that can check next turn if they finish well. And we have arrived at game 4. We also see my Yef again, a Yog. Alex Traza! Ken! On the Alex! Okay, that's gonna be hype. And finally, we might get to see some APM pirates. Oh, he got Hogger! Ampata! Got Hogger with Silas Hero Power. So, this is gonna be absolutely insane. I'm I'm happy. And now we see that the other Silas in the lobby also has a Peggy already. Alex levels to 5 and completely pops off. And Alex into 5. To tier 5 so that he can get a 5 drop okay. with his buddy. Okay. So many stats are about to be on his board right now and I would not want to fake. That was a spike, dude. In one turn, he filled his board with a bunch of powerful dragons. I think he could. Wait, that's a triple in shop! Um, pick from the hero power. That's Obviously, a triple in not. shop! Once again, we see a lot of people high rolling, and then, of course, a mutant is doing some absolutely crazy shit. What the fuck is this board? <laughs> okay, man. Yeah, it really seems like the Alex Traza pick worked out for Ken here. Okay, the Alex is just chilling. They triple into Kaleg. They got a golden promo into Kaleg. When they get their buddies, they go to six and they just win. Akazamzrak's board, on the other hand, is uh, pretty scuffed to say the least. It's purely just relying on the buddy. So it's Whoa. a big deal. Collins was able to get to tier six and live. He's still on 32 HP. When he pushed to six, he was also on 32. I don't know what his board looked like, but now he's gonna win. Because he has uh, Amalgadons, he has a golden brand. I mean, yeah, it's not even close. He's just gonna blow out a lobby now. And while these people are high rolling, just like Akazanzarak, the Yogg is in a weird spot. This is such a bad board. <laughs> this compared to what other people are doing. Again, it's matchups, right? Oh, I found a Dong. Okay, wait, he found double Dong. Never mind. I take it back. The comeback of the century. I mean, here's the Mayev again. Wait, double go- Collins! Collins, Collins, you have a golden brand and double golden Caligals. What happened here? Oh, but he is facing an Akazanzrak and um, yeah, that usually leads to some issues. He just has to sit through 10 minutes of animation. This is so unfortunate. Collins is playing an APM comp. Collins needs to go fast. He has a million actions to do with Golem Bren here and his evil slinger in hand. And now you have Akazanzrak with a million fucking secrets just taking up all of the animation time. So if this fight is over, Yog gets his turn. Meanwhile, here's an entire movie that plays out and Collins is fucked. Collins is at a massive disadvantage here compared to the others in the lobby. Even though he is already playing an APM comp, he has to just witness this bullshit and 
have no time next turn. In the end, it's not really gonna matter anyway. Final fight is the 8pm Pirate Silas against the Mayev. And Mayev takes the crown. Be Nice is the first player in check and just needs the first place now to win the tournament because he played safe and got a top 4 on Akazamzarak. However, the three people behind him just need a top 4 as well to be in check. On to game 5. For the hero picks, nothing too crazy except for maybe Curator and Ticketus. Wait! Ticketus went 3 on 3! Ticketus as a first player in the entire tournament that goes 3 on 3, I think. And trust me, things only get better this game. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's a 4 on 4! Listen, no! Four Dude, what a Gigak Chad! He just said, fuck it, I'm going to tier 4. Ken! Legend! I root for Ken now, he needs to win his lobby. Please, Ken. Meanwhile, nobody seems too strong early on. Like, Maya, for example, has no triples lined up. So it's still very much everyone's game, but then we see the Zephyrus. Zephyrus has a golden brand next turn. Gilwing? We haven't seen Quillboards for a while. Uh, double Brutes with Banner already. It's turn 6. These are 11-11s. And this is honestly the best play I think I've seen all tournament. Be Nice is the player in check, so he needs the first place here to win. He already has a Mama Bear on the board, so I think most people would just take Crocodile here and be really strong. But instead, he has a Mama Bear and goes for the brand. Dude, Murlocs that's respect. On board. He's on six. This is a dong he wins. He's the oh, first one. He won. Oh my gosh. He, instead of taking Crocolisk with a Mombear on a board, this dude is like, fuck it, I need a first place, I'm taking Bran, I'm leveling, I'm hitting Dong from the map and winning that way. He does that. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think he wins. But I probably spoke too soon because right after we snap to a Reno with a Golden Hogger. Reno has a Golden Hogger. We have AP Empires as well, which technically could beat it because he's infinite. But I'm uh, not infinite yet. If he has infinite gold, he could beat that. But um, here's the Elisa turn later. Uh, they found, okay, they tripled their Morganon. Goes yeah. for the triple go coiler, getting them buffed with the mama first. Another oh Amalgadon is hit. But this is not where the party stops. Zephyrus has a golden brand on tier 6 as well. And even though Zephyrus is still very healthy on 26 HP, they are facing the Elise here. And no! Not gonna be able to oh, get what a hit! And we'll make Zephyrus should have lived here, but they, they hit the Amalgadon. Oh, that's so unlucky. Zephyrus had to hit just value trade. But no, he goes straight into the dong and dies. And here we have Kurt pulling off a Skellywag comp on Hook Tusk, which does have potential to also win the lobby still. The next player against Elise is the Mayev. This isn't enough. Also has a golden brand, so that's two people with golden brand, but Zephyrus died early. And he knows that B nice Xyrella can't win here or it's all over, so he respects him. Sells the golden brand already to just play a selfless. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, Pyro spawn! Holy fuck, dude! He also gets brutally murdered and now there is a top 3 left. Pompata again with the ghoul to counter in Idina, but it just isn't enough, even with Golden Selfless against the Pyrus spawn and the Amalgadons from the Xyrella. Already congratulating Be Nice, but he still has one more opponent to get through before he can actually call himself the winner of the first Lobby Legends, and that is Kurt with the Skellywag comp. If he goes first, the Selfless doesn't land on Skellywag, he might have a chance, but it's not high. Go, little Skellywag, go! <laughs> His face. <laughs> Going to spawn four pirates here, and with the golden oh, he goes Eliza, second. each one of those attacking is plus four plus you two. Have to but go the attack first. order is not even what Kurt wanted to see. He loses nope. a 50 50 to get the board space. GG! The selfless dead first. Be nice. is the first winner. That is respectable. He won in five rounds. The average is eight. The quickest you can do it is four. He was the first one to hit check and instantly get a first place. Pure domination. Congratulations to Be Nice for winning the very first Lobby Legends. Very deserved, insane performance. From all the players as well, this was super interesting and cool to watch. And I can't wait to see what Lobby Legends and official BG Esports has for us in store next. Don't forget to subscribe to your channel if you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one.